Hi, Dan Dustin here. Welcome to uh, Answers to Spoon Questions or whatever the title of this thing is. Number, what, four? <laughs> number four. A few things to clean up from number three. And I, I scared my wife a bit. She's sitting behind the camera when I said ammonia wash. Now, of course, what I mean when I say ammonia wash is soap and water with a little ammonia and be sure to uh, put a box fan beside the sink and just turn it on and blow the fumes away. And there's a good story about how I learned this, but uh, there isn't time for it. Let me see. Oh yeah, uh, there's another uh, fellow who wrote, uh, wrote in about the linseed oil. And I think it would be nice if there's anybody out there who has the ability to really, really figure out exactly what is in that uh, gallon can of uh, boiled linseed oil you buy at the hardware store. It would be awful nice if the rest of us could know it. Uh, this fellow suggested it was turpentine. I doubt it. I, I, uh, I don't think it's volatile in any way, and, and I don't smell it. And of course, we mix it with turpentine to use it on furniture, but maybe, I, I don't know. And the same is true of uh, raw linseed oil from the hardware store. They probably put stuff in that too. And these days there are um, food safe dryers, I'm guessing, uh, but I don't know anything about them. So if anybody does, it would be nice to, uh, what's happening is, is these, uh, these episodes are becoming a bit of a forum as information comes to me and it's way beyond me, so I'm running it back to you. So. Uh, something's changing here, and, and uh, we just accept the change and let it be. And I have uh, uh, a couple of other uh, emails, which uh, my wife has printed out for me, and I thank her. Uh, can you explain what pickup sticks are used for, and also do you ever use mineral oil? Uh, I will certainly talk about pickup sticks today. <clears throat> and no, I never use mineral oil, uh, but that doesn't mean you can't uh, help yourself. It's certainly edible. And something about this email reminded me, or maybe it was the next email. Let's try the next email first. Okay, here it goes. Pickup sticks, what a great idea. How many sticks do you think you can get out of that bundle? I loved how you explained how your spoon got its strength from being pulled from around the knot. Does this work for pickup sticks as well? Or does the strength come from the firing? Uh, okay, a number of questions here. Number one, never fire pickup sticks. Uh, and, and I can see my wife behind the camera smiling now because we both remember about the first set I made which were fired. And uh, the guy who bought them, came back year after year after year and, and told me how every day that he wants to play pickup sticks, he has to dedicate an entire evening to playing pickup sticks because he has to get out his can of turpentine and his paper towels and because they're all sticky. And he has to rub down every one and wipe down every one and then play his game of pickup sticks and then the next time they're sticky again. Uh, and uh, we, we had some lovely discussions. He liked to crow and complain, and, and uh, I would allow as how this was, of course, my intention, so that he would understand the, uh, the value of my art and the necessity of, uh, of, of his uh, participation, and he would agree with that and thank me profusely, and we would discuss how I'd never ask for enough money because they are so especially wonderful being sticky, and uh, so forth and so on. It was uh, kind of silly. And, and of course, he was older than I, so he, he passed. And, and uh, the youth, youth always uh, can always outlive. Uh, youth outlives, and I have outlived a lot, which reminds me somehow of Arthur Hendrick, who was a builder. And uh, in Kenny Bunport, Maine, in uh, 1969, I was a young, I was young and beginning. I was in my early 20s, I guess. And uh, he was, uh, uh, I, said, I could do a whole presentation on Art Hendrick, a builder. Isn't it interesting how all these builders have great names, like Art Hendrick, and I could name a few around here, but they're, you know, they might not like it, so I won't. 
Anyhow, he said something to me. He built uh, little, uh, not always little, but he built expensive, expensive houses for millionaires who were moving into St. Bon Court, as millionaires do. This was long before the uh, Bush uh, administration. We knew Walker's Point was there, and we assumed they were beer magnets. We knew nothing of the family until later on when it got impossible to live in town. Anyhow, I don't live there anymore. But Art Hendricks said to me, is he said, you got to be your own critic. People are going to say nice things, and that's nice. And you can listen to them, but you can't trust them. You gotta be your own critic. And and I carried that with me for many years and it, it, it did me well. I was glad to have those words and I didn't forget them. Uh, I have recently, in my as I get older, and I'm his age now, I I've forgotten them and I've gotten more into Popeye. And I am what I am, and I don't think about it and worry about it much anymore. But that's a pattern that was in my life and it wouldn't surprise me uh, at all if it uh, worked in some way for you. Another question was, uh, how many sticks do you think you can get out of that bundle? You remember that, that piece I showed you? <laughs> you remember that piece I showed you? Well, I just, five minutes ago I split them out. And the answer is uh, just about a million, uh, depending, on, depending on how liberal you want to be. But uh, so there's one. And, I think we probably can peel another one off of it, but I don't suppose we want to be, we can't call that a pickup stick, we don't want to be that liberal, so we could take this, this is a lovely pickup stick, and here we have these, and they break up, oh, there's one, and, and uh, oh, look at this, oh, beautiful, huh, this three, I think this is acceptable, and maybe, oh, look, look, okay, uh, I, yeah, I missed about a gazillion, uh, the, uh, my rule of thumb, this one's broken, okay. Uh, my rule of thumb is you, a set of pickup sticks. I like a set of pickups to be sticks to be about 40. And uh, the, uh, the commercial ones, there's no sense in even thinking about the commercial ones. Uh, if I had my clam knife, which I didn't think to bring out here, uh, and I'm not going to break these up without a clam knife, I could, I could knock these apart. Look at them all. Wow. Whoa. So if anybody out there wants to dedicate his life, the rest of his life, to this set of pickup sticks, uh, to uh, break them apart and, and make a beautiful set of pickup sticks and sand them and, and oil them lightly, uh, finish them lightly in some way, uh, uh, get in touch with me. You, I think you have to uh, you have to subscribe to my channel before you can. Oh, I have a YouTube. Wait, I have a email. I get my, I have an email. It's coming up later somewhere. Uh, so email me and I'll be happy to mail them to you. Here's, and here is the rest of the piece. Remember how it had all those pieces coming off of it in the last episode. And here are some more you could peel off. And notice, look carefully here, you will see uh, a crack running right down here. And you'll see it on the end. Can you see that crack on the end? And I never told you this, and this is something else I wanted to say. When I was beginning, I didn't know any of this. I, I, I'm t I told you about. Uh, uh, I, didn't, I didn't trust myself, so it didn't occur to me to look for a spoon in the wood, which is probably a good thing, because just because you see a spoon in the wood doesn't mean it's there. You remember the one I showed you with the bump on the outside of the log, which I suggest you don't even try to make. So what I did when I was beginning was I would just take a piece of wood, firewood, and, and, and split, it, split it where it was cracked. I would put a wedge in where it was cracked and split it there and see what was in there. It's where the wood wants to be cracked. You see, it's a spiritual kind of thing. And that's how I began. And uh, so this is, oh, and notice, I have never noticed this before, but you see these marks, uh, these marks on the wood. Uh, this, these pickup sticks were made by some horrid, evil industrial process. Uh, you know, something, something stressed and brutalized this wood in a terrible, horrible way. 
and we are rescuing the, uh, the body here and making it into something uh, immortal. And this is uh, part of our, the spiritual side of our art. And it's all a crock of baloney. And uh, it's kind of fun. At one point, before I discovered I was a Zen artist, uh, because all these potters, uh, check out Ash Dry Vessels from, on my YouTube channel. You'll, you'll get the rap. All these potters told me I was a Zen artist. I was a, uh, I thought I was a, uh, I, I was calling myself an absurdist. That was my, one of my uh, artistic statements. And I'm thinking maybe about going back to it. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, also, uh, also, um, maybe I call myself a primitive artist, and that's certainly true. And maybe I should stick with primitive art. So somebody please take this stuff off my hands. Uh, I, I, I love it, but I don't have the energy to do it. And uh, I'm slowing down. I'm getting older. I'm slowing down and have to make spoons pretty much. So staying on this theme uh, of uh, industrial uh, savagery, uh, here is uh, a piece of mountain laurel, which I picked up some years ago. Uh, Often where I'm cutting wood for spoons, mountain laurel is known as spoon wood, and you can kind of see the spoons in it, except it's all broken up. This piece had been run over multiple times by a skitter. I was in an area where pine, a pine forest had been cut for lumber, and, and the mountain laurel grows in amongst the pine, and it was just ignored, and because uh, it you know, it's only grows 20 feet high, this, this piece must have been about that. So that's a big mountain laurel. Uh, it was just driven over by these big machines because nobody cared. Oh, poor thing. Patty, patty, patty. So, so what we'll do is we'll make this into a uh, uh, set of pickup sticks, and they'll be beautiful. And here is uh, an example. If anybody wants this one, by the way, also let me know. Make a good plea. It would be nice if you paid the postage which is like, <laughs> it, 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 at, uh, the last time I tried to sell, send something this heavy by, by mail, it was like 40 bucks, I don't remember, but, but uh, I, I'll mail it to you and you can mail me the, whatever was on the package afterwards. So here is a, a set which has been begun by, uh, in a number of classes, I used to teach classes for the local, local college, and, and here's a set. So, so a lot of this is, is uh, this is the beginning. This something like this turns into something like this, and uh, so here's a piece that's been whittled at by a bunch of students. I actually would split it again and, and make two out of this. The, the more you can split a given piece, the, uh, the 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 more pieces match so nicely. And oh, look at that! Well, it'd be easy to split that one again. So how do you split a piece like this? Okay, um, so this is also available, um, I guess, I don't know. And if they're old friends, it kind of would hurt me to lose them, but I'm never going to do anything with them. And, and uh, so here is a piece of somewhat, something like this uh, in the process of being split with a whole bunch of little wedges. What are these little wedges? These little wedges are pieces of knives. Knives are wedges. All you got to do is, is uh, cut, cut a knife, shorter by half inch or quarter inch better, bit, bit by bit, you have all these wedges. And so here are my, uh, here's my stash. You'll have to make your own. Here's my stash of, uh, uh, that's a fat one I made out of uh, something. I don't remember what. Now here's another fat one I made out of something I found, uh, and I made them. I made some for a while out of concrete nails, those short, thick concrete nails. But here you see all of these long ones. These are all cut from one wide knife blade, and they make knife blades this wide, and you can find them. And, and they're all you, you tap them in with a. See how that's a little bent from being, you can tap them in. Here's the short ones. From a, this, these are all pieces of knife blade here. Okay. They're all pieces of knife blade, and here they are in. And now around this knot, uh, 
there probably will not split. So at some point, we'll, get, we'll come in through here with a very fine drill. And we'll drill about 60 holes, yang, 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 through there, and break, break it apart, see? And we'll get two out of here, and then we'll look at it and see, can we get three? But that's, that's how, I mean, I, I think we, need, we really need to, to call ourselves, those of us who get into doing this, see? And you see, I, I uh, uh, oh, look at this. I, I found a couple of pieces in the uh, <coughs> firewood again. I'll, and see that? There's a, there's a spoon for you. <clears throat> you see how, how it rises up. And that's a kind of a nice spoon. And, and notice how similar it is to this. Is a, probably there's a knot here, and there's a knot in there somewhere. And uh, wood, wood is consistent, and you certainly can learn to... Uh, uh, I used to call it, I, somehow I gained x-ray vision. I could look into a tree and see the spoons. And, and you can too, and it won't take long, but, but I, I had to come at it the hard way, and, and I'm here, I'm here I'm helping you a little bit. I don't quite know exactly how, but that's that makes could make it a little easier for you. And here's another place where spoons show up, you know, where the the uh, tree widens out at the at the base, you know, towards the ground. And and this this here is not it's not an elegant spoon, but it would make a nice stir fry. It's the shape. So this is all oak, and oak for traditional spoon wood, but it's not the best of spoon wood. The nut woods are open grain woods, and they tend to be rough. Uh, the fruit woods are closed grain woods and tend to be smoother, and you'll figure this out all as you go, and I could talk forever. And, and uh, I've had three experiences where uh, old men who knew things deeply uh, explained them to me very carefully, and I didn't have the background to understand them. And I don't want to do that to you. Or at least I want you to be aware of it if it hasn't happened to you yet. But Norris Bash did it. He sat down and told me all about different kinds of wagons and where they wore out and how, how to repair them and what their advantages and disadvantages were. And it just went right through me. I just didn't have enough experience with horses and wagons to understand it. He talked to me one time about all the, uh, all the different apple woods and their qualities. We think apple wood, apple wood, right? No way. Norris, Norris would talk about Macintosh and Baldwin and, and, as in terms of the quality of the wood. And uh, I just sat there knowing I, would, I, I, well, I didn't know how to identify them, for starters, and still don't really. And uh, so that, sometimes you, you don't need all this information. You know, the last one was a flute expert. He, he come, <laughs> I studied with this fellow, and he, he uh, did all the testing for a flute company, and he told me, about every single note in the high range of the flute and how it had to be handled and what its tendencies were in terms of being sharp and flatness and that. And, uh, but I know that this can be known. And to know something can be known is, that's education in itself. So now I'm going to, to uh, talk about uh, pickup sticks. And, and uh, this is my I have a dream speech. This is a set of pickup sticks. It's not, it's not done. Uh, I had to explain them. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to, once in a while, I need to explain pickup sticks. And I don't have any. So I knock, I, I picked out from everything all the, see here, these pieces, obviously, these long pieces. I'm going to get them out of here because my table's not big enough. But you have a, a pickup, set of pickup sticks with sticks. Isn't they nice? The sticks as long as this, these two go together, they were split, you know how now, and they go with these, I think, probably. My table's not big enough, so I can't use those, so I cut these down. So here's a set of pickup sticks, and pickup sticks have rules. I'll just do it from here, I guess. No, I'll stand up and do it from behind here. Well, pickup sticks have rules, and I've, I, I've made them from experience. And uh, so one person drops the sticks. Uh, and then the uh, play goes around the table in some order, which is a little difficult because people have to shift. But to make a good set of, a good game of pickup sticks, you need to be able to walk around the table. And uh, the rule is each person may take only one stick until the... Uh, the pile has been disturbed. 
The pile has been disturbed if any observer sees disturbance. So obviously I'll start by taking this one. And then in, in this, by the way, this is just a piece of wire. This is a piece of uh, house wire, 12, 14 gauge house wire. And uh, I was just trying to be liberal. I wouldn't use something like this in my set of pickup sticks, but I was trying to be liberal. So this is my pile. And then the next person will come and look, and I'm guessing this one can be lifted and slid out. I don't see any other one. That, this is a pretty good fall, so let's try it, see? Lift and slide, and you saw the motion, and so did everybody else. So if there is motion, the piece which has been attempted, this piece, uh, goes to the bone pile. That's the bone pile, and the bone pile is a contender. So you can play pickup sticks alone and by yourself because uh, the bone pile can win. The more players there are, the more likely the bone pile to win. And it goes around like this, and those are the rules. Uh, it's nice for a pickup stick to have a point on the end because sometimes you see my thumb here. Sometimes you want to push on the end. I lift the stick. Uh, did you get that one? Okay, so I'm playing alone, so now I have two. The bone pile is only one, and this one is very light. See that light, skinny one? It's very nice for a set of pickup sticks to have one skinny, skinny, skinny light one because it's so easy. It's so special. Motion, bone pile. I'm even with the bone pile now. So those are the rules. This is the game, and here is... Uh, this is the oldest game known to humankind. You, 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 can, you can see there's a set of these in a museum. The cavemen played, played pickup sticks. And I, I, don't, I don't, you can't get to the museum. It's called the Museum of Dan's Imagination. So you probably can't actually see this, but, but I, 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 uh, I assure you it is there. Uh, and pickup sticks can be played by children and adults because there is that this kind of ability is uh, and it's good for everybody I bet that one will slide out see, uh, see the bone pile is winning again uh, so I have a dream and here is here is my dream is uh, uh, somebody a wood carver like you somebody who's able to deal with uh, hunks of wood and splitting them and they don't have to be split out of one hunk of wood but it's a lot of fun uh, they could, as I say, there's, there's simpler ways to make pickup sticks, hundreds of them. And this is, by the way, this piece, this is a piece of wood. No, I moved it. See, my finger touched that. I should have had that. That's a bone pile. This is uh, armature wire. comes from the art studio. It's what artists use to make things and then paint them and other things and stuff. Uh, and again, I, you know, I just, I was trying to be liberal. Uh, so, uh, and I was also going, bending over backwards to be liberal. So here is my dream. Uh, is is a community project, a school, uh, a club, the Boy Scouts, a, a, a sports team at the high school, a, a, a church, uh, uh, it, it, uh, hooks up with a woodworker. Uh, every town has woodworkers, and uh, and and makes uh, a set of pickup sticks by passing out one or two sticks to each member. Of the Boy Scout troop, or the, or the choir, or, or the soccer team, or whatever it is, and everybody, all these, all these kids, all these people, adults, children, the whole community, it's, it's, uh, it's not limited. Uh, the parent, parents of the soccer, the soccer moms, each make a stick, and, and so can anybody sympathizers, and, and everybody makes a stick, and you have a period of a, a month or so where everybody has time to make a stick. And, and then you come together into a room which you only occupy for uh, a couple of hours. So it can be the gym at the high school or the all-purpose room or, or in the library or something, wherever you have in your, in your uh, village and your town, your YMCA. And you come together and you have an art show. And the, uh, to qualify for your stick, uh, to be uh, individually placed as a sculpture in the art show, is the only requirement is a good story. If you think your stick should be 
uh, shown to the world with your story of uh, what you learned or how you made it. We're under five minutes, we're working fast, and 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 the rest of the sticks of, uh, should be about forty, or they could be twenty-four to forty. Are a game is played, and uh, with uh, with teams and the cheering, whatever whoever the community wants to do, and then the set of pickup sticks is auctioned. Uh, a silent auction is at that moment, or maybe there's an auctioneer who volunteers to talk like auctioneers talk, and it is known how many human hours is in a set of sticks. Believe me, it takes three hours to make a stick. Uh, and four. And so you have 40, 40 times four, we have 400 hours, so you talk, okay, at two dollars an hour, we got 800 bucks. Who, who bids 800 bucks? All right, who give me six? And sooner or later, someone's gonna give you 100 bucks you know, for, for this set of pickup sticks. And, uh, and so it's a fundraiser. So that's the idea, and uh, this is uh, where I'll end uh, spoon and questions answered. We're getting far away from questions number four. And uh, I have some paper here, but I've lost it. So I am uh, Dan Dustin, the U-S-T-I-N, and this is my YouTube channel. And I have a website where you can buy wooden spoons or communicate with me if you want to start any of these things, uh, which is Dan dot, which is uh, DanDustin.com, and uh, there's something else that I forgot. Oh, I've forgotten what it is anyway. Oh, yes, to be continued. <laughs> I'll see you next time.